Hi, welcome to today's video. My name is Paul. So this week I'm doing some watercolor landscape painting um, just as last week, but this week's painting um, is a little bit different. I think it's more abstract, abstract in the sense of being less representational, more simplistic, more simplified, more minimalist, perhaps. And one of the general themes of this little video is that sort of changing style, evolving style. The more last week's painting was more sort of an impressionistic, what I would call impressionistic watercolor landscape. And that's how I used to paint in watercolor um, a few years ago. Whereas today, this painting you're seeing me doing, um, it is this more abstract, more simplified, less representational style. So in a few minutes, I'll show you the final, this week's final painting, and we'll compare it to a painting, a couple of paintings from one, one of the paintings is from last year, and one of the paintings is from about two or even three years ago, just to see the different style and how it's changed and developed. I think it's interesting. And it has changed um, quite a bit over those sort of three years or so. Even though the styles are different, even from last week and this week, the materials are still the same and the approach is very similar. So in materials, very quickly, it's Sennelier watercolor paint. I use this single brush you can see me using at the moment, sort of mop style brush. It is a watercolor brush. Um, it's not the world's greatest brush, to be honest. Uh, it doesn't hold its shape that well, but it's okay. Um, it works most of the time, kind of. I'm not, the way I approach art, I'm not too fussy about these things. So it works for me. It might not work for everybody. And I know there's plenty of people out there who like to have more than one brush. Um, again, it's just, I like to keep things simple. Um, I don't like to overcomplicate things. Um, so if I had three or four brushes, I'd always be thinking, should I be using this brush or that brush? And just using the one brush just keeps it all very simple for me. It's less stressful, I think. But it also limits what you can do. So pros and cons. Other things, uh, the paper is, these days I use the German paper, Hanemulle paper. I think that's how it's pronounced. Um, it's quite a heavy paper. It's about 400 and something grams per square meter, um, which is about a third heavier than normal paper that I would use. It has a slightly textured surface, but it's not a rough surface. When I first got started, I was using the French Arches paper, which had a much rougher um, surface, which was good for the sort of impressionistic style I was doing at that time. But this style that I'm doing, you can see me doing at the moment, I prefer a slightly smoother or medium sort of surface paper. I think it's, you know, if you're getting started in watercolor or thinking about it, and it can all seem quite confusing what paper to use, etc., etc. I think the main difference between the papers, well, if you get a, a paper that's specifically designed for watercolor painting, I think the main difference then is what surface do you want? Do you want a smoother surface or a rougher surface? And, you know, I can't tell you which one to use because I have no idea which preference you're going to have. Um, they're both perfectly valid, but of course they're different. And I'd say a rougher surface, I think is probably better suited if you're doing a, a loose impressionistic style. This sort of style I'm doing, which is still very loose, but it's more, um, a little bit more abstract, slightly more sort of washes perhaps. That, in that case, I think a slightly smoother medium surface paper it works better for me anyway. I prefer it. This is 
sort of close-up scan of the, the final painting. Say very simple and using the limited color palette, just blue and yellow basically. So as I said, compare this week's painting, the bottom right painting, to two earlier paintings. The top right is from about a year ago. And then the larger painting on the left, that one is from about three, three and a half years ago. So it's an earlier attempt at a watercolor painting uh, by me. And as you can see, it's very, it looks very different. Um, first of all, it's on the rougher paper. It's on the arches paper. And also back then, I had no idea how to use watercolor. So I was just, just experimenting. Just using it whatever way seemed natural to me. And I, I never approach watercolor in a precious sort of way where, you know, it's, oh, it's a magical medium and we must respect it. And no, I just, I just try different things and see what happens. So this was the early attempts and I mixed in a bit of gouache in there. You can see bits of white that evolved into the top right hand painting, which was still somewhat impressionistic impressionistic I think but it was getting closer to a more traditional use of watercolor perhaps and then the this week's painting which is similar application of water paint but slightly different style I'm moving away from sort of impressionism towards more minimalist less representational um, style of painting landscapes Another thing to think about is not just, you know, is it okay to let my style evolve and change, but also can I use different media? So when you listen to some of the um, maybe self-proclaimed experts or gurus on art, they will often say you should stick to one style. If you have something like Instagram, it, all the paintings must be in this one style using one medium etc etc i think their logic for saying that is they're assuming that you're trying to sell your paintings or maybe trying to impress a gallery or something like that and in that case it is easier to sell a single recognizable style than trying to sell something which is a little bit of this a little bit of that and different things um, it's just from a, a marketing point of view a single brand or recognizable style is just easier to to market but of course if you're using different media then it's going to look different and you can see the three different media that i use the most for landscapes top right is this week's watercolor below that is just charcoal it's willow charcoal and then again on the left the bigger painting is compressed charcoal and soft pastels to be honest I like using different media. I'm not worried about a single recognizable brand or style. I like experimenting and trying different things. So I'm going to keep doing that this year. Um, and in fact, I, I want to explore a few different media as well. I've always been interested in printmaking, but I've never tried it. So I might try it this year. I'm looking into it. Uh, what's required and things like that um, we'll see how expensive it is and then the other thing that I want to try and I already have everything I need to do that and that's digital um, I know not everybody likes digital art I love it so I'm going to try it um, and I'm interested in doing landscapes in a digital art style I'll probably do a a video or two on that a little bit later next year 2024 um, to try and explain what I mean but I have a certain idea sort of aesthetic in my head that I want to try and recreate using digital art I say I'll do a special video on that at some point in the not too distant future if you made it this far in the video thank you for watching and listening um, Thank you for everybody who has supported the channel, supported me over the last year and longer. Um, 
the channel has grown at a very modest rate, but it has grown and that's great. And I'm glad that it's getting to more people and more people are having a chance to see the videos. Everybody who supported me on Patreon, again, over this year and previous years, uh, thank you. Your donations help to keep the whole thing going. It helps to pay for paper and a new camera and things like that. So it really does make a difference. Again, as I say, if you made it this far, thank you for watching the video and hopefully see you again next week or we could say next year in 2024.